welcome to Spellbound. I'm your host, 32Bits. Today we're going to be taking a look at the SX32. It's an expansion for the Amiga CD32 um, that basically turns it into uh, an Amiga 1200. And here it is over here. Um, it comes in two parts. If there's a back plane that fits on the, uh, well, back of the CD32. And then there's the uh, expansion that fits inside the CD32 and the expansion port in the back. The SX32 um, gives you an um, IDE uh, connector, so you can uh, put in a uh, hard drive. This one actually has a hard drive. This is the original hard drive that came with it. Um, you can put up to 8 bags of RAM. This one actually has 4 right now. Um, and the uh, backplane connector gives you a bunch of ports. It gives you a parallel port, a floppy drive port, VGA port, serial port, and a video out port. This is the uh, unit that I usually have inside of my... Uh, NTSC CD32 and today we're going to be um, I'm going to be replacing this hard drive with a with a compact compact flash um, card so you'll see the uh, connector here it's just a standard um, IDE connector um, this is the Maxstar drive so I'm going to go ahead and um, disconnect this by the drive out and then disconnect it from the ribbon cable and so this is the final uh, result here. I put a little rubber band on here to help with the folding of the um, ribbon cable that makes the um, the uh, compact flash unit sit in the same space, occupy the same space that the um, that the hard drive did. So I'll sit there. Okay. Now with that done, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put it in the uh, SX32 and see if she boots. So we have the uh, SX32 module reinstalled into the CD32. I have the top case up the top of the case open for now and kind of resting on its side um, just because I want to be able to make sure everything's working before I button it down <clears throat> and I wanted to show you how it looks when it's you know sitting in here you do have to take the top cover off to insert this it just won't fit exactly in if you sort it insert just insert it from the back you actually have to lift the cover up um, that's because of the way it it's just a little too <clears throat> wide here um, it won't fit out the it won't fit out the side and you can't finagle it and the directions for installing this actually do say you need to take the cover off so that's what I've done um, you know this is the unit that's usually in here so I'm familiar with the procedure had that off have the new compact flash installed um, replacing the hard drive that was in there and the reason I did that is because I'm trying to install some software and I just ran out of room anyway so I should not run into any problems even with all the games and stuff that I want to put on there Anyway, the uh, module's installed. Um, the the bottom connector is connected to the edge connector on this, the back of the CD32, and then this uh, the, you know the back plane is installed that way. And then the module here slots into the top, and it rests on the heat shield here. And there are some rubber feet. I don't know if you can see those, but there's one here and this one here that uh, raise it. Uh, to the proper height so it meet, meets up with the um, edge connector here and it keeps it from shorting on the bottom it just sits, it sits nice there um, so yeah so it's all ready to go I'm ready to test it out hopefully when I turn it on we'll get some blinking lights and we'll also get a uh, workbench I copied that over from the hard drive um, onto the you know first partition on this so let's go ahead and see So far, so good. Okay, that's not good because what we should be seeing is the uh, workbench and not the CD32 boot screen. That's coming up because it's trying to boot from the CD um, and there's no CD in there. It would have also um, booted from the floppy if I had a floppy in there. So something's going on with the with the compact flash so I'm gonna have to check that out and see what's what and then try again okay so I had to take a, I had a look at everything um, I reseated the RAM just in case and um, I reseated the um, the connector here for the ID um, I, I I was looking at it and I was thinking that maybe this side was you know a little loose so again take it off reseated it and um, I'm gonna go ahead and try powering it up again And there's the light. There we go. It looks like it's going to boot off of the uh, compact flash. And 
and there's our workbench. Fantastic. There you have it. Um, quick overview of the uh, SX32. Um, this is an SX32 Mark I, by the way. Um, there are a couple different versions. Uh, the There's the uh, Mark II, which is basically the Mark I except a little smaller, and um, there's the Pro module. And the Pro module adds a CPU upgrade for to an 030. But I'm very happy with this uh, card. I am looking forward to the Terrible Fire uh, 330 card, which also adds a uh, CPU upgrade for the CD32, and the possibility of a Wi-Fi. Now, that's going to be awesome. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Um, if you did, please make sure to like and subscribe and uh, hit the bell for notifications. And um, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. Have a good day.